Hey everyone, this is Gina. I am your host. This is the Destination Baby and Kids YouTube channel. Welcome back. This is my third attempt to make this video today. So hopefully this time it'll be correct. And it's a super long video. So I'm excited to be here with you guys today to go over a whole host of information about Car Seat 101. So this is by all means not all inclusive. This is not every single thing you would ever need to know about a car seat. This is just an informational video to kind of explain the differences about different styles of car seats as well as some back seat safety information just about your vehicle and then also understanding weights and heights of kids, which car seat makes sense for what age, and then also um, ways to be able to shop effectively without being being a responsible shopper. So we'll go over that too. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna start off this video a little differently than the other ones. My name is Gina. I am a car seat technician. I have been a car seat technician now for going on uh, 13 or 14 years, hard to remember. Um, I'm a store owner. I've sold car seats for at least the last 20 years. Um, and I'm directly responsible for the car seats of all my nephews, uh, my niece, and then uh, my friend's car seats as well. So I've had a lot of little kids over the years in the different seats. And so I have a lot of experience doing this stuff in addition to being a technician. Um, I used to have to do more installations than I do now. Luckily I own my own store, so I don't have to do that hardly ever anymore, which is great. Um, not any other reason that I'm kind of lazy. So that being said, let's get into this. The intention of this video is to help parents understand car seat basics. Um, and so I think the best thing to start with is going over backseat basics. So before we even start with the car seat, let's talk about, uh, well, even before backseat basics, let's start with the law. So I'm in California. Let's talk about the law in California. So for car seats in California, the law says that basically kids, I think it's under the age of 13, need to be riding in the back seat. So if you've got that adorable eight-year-old sitting up in the front seat by an airbag, that is um, not cool. They should be in the back seat. It's significantly safer, and we'll go over why. Uh, additionally, kids need to be in a booster seat until they are eight years old and four feet, uh, nine inches tall. So I'm sure there's some of you that are going to be like, oh, my grandma still needs to be in a booster seat then. Yep, she probably would benefit from it. This is not like punitive, uh, the way to view car seat safety is not that it's punitive. These are not rules to punish you. They are not rules to punish your children. What this is talking about is giving the occupant in the car the best chance at surviving a fatality. So if you're like approaching it from a negative place or a place where you feel it's punitive or you just get frustrated because you don't understand the information, bringing that negativity into the conversation will very strongly color the way that you feel about using this stuff. And guess what? You're gonna have to use it every single day for at least the next five years. So like, I would encourage you to get into the spirit of it and sort of like be excited about the fact that we have these tremendous safety advantages in 2024 that we didn't have back in like the 80s and the 90s. So um, that being said, the booster seat is gonna be for four feet, nine inches tall or shorter and uh, eight years old and under. The other part of this law is that in California, children need to sit backward until they are two years old. In Minnesota, where I'm from, I don't think they have a two-year-old, there goes the fire truck. They don't have a two-year-old uh, law there. In Minnesota, the law is kids only need to be one when we turn them around forward facing. So does physics change when we go between California and Minnesota? No, it doesn't. California recommendation aligns with what is referred to as best practice. So as a car seat technician, and a car seat technician means that you are a person that has passed a specific set of uh, certifying courses uh, through Safe Kids Worldwide that enables you to have the correct understanding and knowledge of the car safety as well as the car seat information to be able to help people uh, make correct installations and teach them how to be able to be confident in doing those kind of things. So best practice just means that we are going again above and beyond as far as what we care about. So the law is not generally aligned with best practice. However, 
For instance, in California, I would say that the law telling kids that they have to be at least two years old before they can turn around to be forward facing is in alignment with that best practice. Um, okay, so that's the law in California. Now let's talk about some of the car, uh, vehicle seat basics. So I am going to zoom in on this vehicle seat and I'm gonna tip it forward here. On the bottom here, and over here, I have two metal brackets. Those are called lower anchors. Every car 2003 and newer has those. You generally only have two sets. Usually they are on the outboard positions of your back seat, which means that like if you have a middle seat, nine times out of 10, you won't have a middle set, but some cars do. All cars have seat belts. So seat belts and the lower anchors are the way that we install car seats into a car. So sometimes people freak out and they think, well, you know, I've got a, a 2007 Ford Focus. Nothing is going to fit in my car. You can relax. There's a ton of stuff that's going to fit in your car and it's going to fit very effectively because that Ford Focus from 2007, um, it's a very safe car to begin with. But in addition, it's got lower anchors as well as a seatbelt and your car probably also has seatbelts that have what are referred to as switchable locking retractors which means that we pull the seatbelt all the way out very slowly if you go too fast you can accidentally lock it off which is annoying so once it comes all the way out when it retracts back in it's probably going to make a ratcheting or a click sound I've got my microphone near that so hopefully you guys can hear it all that clicking means is that if i pull on the seatbelt it's locked. It's not going to enable me to move forward. To turn this off, we're just gonna let it retract all the way back in. And then, yeah, this is a great example, right? Now it's moving normally again. So um, that is a switchable locking retractor on a seatbelt. We talk about car seats that need to utilize vehicle belt lock off. Um, so that's what that refers to. And then we also have lower anchors. Now frequently people are like, oh, well, I've got lower anchors and I have seat belts, so I'm gonna use both methods of installation because two things are better than one. No. <laughs> um, car seats, it's really, really important to read your manual no matter what seat you have, no matter how many videos you've watched, you need to read the manual that comes with it to see what the instructions say regarding installation. But 99.9% .9 of car seats, there's like a few exceptions and of course I do sell them, but um, almost all car seats are going to be either or, meaning you either use the lower anchors or you use the seatbelt. The other thing is that since 2014, lower anchors um, have now, there's been some changes. And so on the side of the car seat, especially the larger size car seats, they do mark at what weight you need to stop using the lower anchors for installation and you would switch over to using the seatbelt instead. So uh, if that sounds convoluted, I understand, but just keep in mind, we do have two different installation methods for these car seats, which is great. All right, so that's sort of some information about the back seat in your car. We talked a little bit about best practice, which is really important. Okay, so from a physics standpoint, let's talk about what makes sense for what uh, sort of is the best choices for children. So our best choice, number one choice, would be to keep the child backward, rear facing as long as possible. So, um, what that means is that even though we talked about there are different laws in different places that tell you you can turn your kids around to be forward facing at age one, we would never recommend that. The reasoning behind this is that if you go into a frontal collision with your head and your neck protected like you would in a rear facing car seat, it is 80% safer than sitting forward facing. You can take the crummiest cheapest car seat and put it backward and you take the most expensive forward facing car seat and put it forward and the cheap one is still going to have better safety results and the reasoning is the orientation of the seat so we cannot state strongly enough that we want to leave these kids backward as long as they tolerate it and as long as we're in alignment with the law and then also as long as the seat will tolerate it now after sitting backward, the next best thing that we can make sure that our car seat has is gonna be what's referred to as a five-point harness. 
So people come in all the time and they're like, I don't get it. What's a five point harness seat? Five point harness, I'm gonna bring this over, just refers to the fact that there are one, two, three, four, five different spots where the harness system pops out of the seat to go around the child's body. So like for your forward facing car seats, those have this five point harness. So if a child isn't sitting backward, we don't wanna turn them around and put them right into a seat belt seat. We wanna put them in a five point harness for as long as is allowable. And then beyond that, we move to a seat belt style system, okay? So that being said, Let's launch into the different types of car seats and then um, I'm gonna keep switching around if I need to, but if you're still bearing with me right now, I'm thrilled. This is a lot of information, so pat yourself on the back. You're doing a great job listening. All right, so this style of seat right here, this is going to be referred to as an infant seat. And I'm gonna point out, I'm gonna be using a lot of Nuna car seats uh, in this video, and it's primarily because that's my best familiarity. There are a million different brands of car seats, and what I'm saying is that most of the information that I'm saying rings true for about 99% of stuff. There's always exceptions to everything. Um, so just keep that in mind, and as I keep repeating, you need to read your manual. You are responsible for the safety of your children, so you need to read these manuals, especially for the safety stuff. The car seat is pretty much the only thing, like, it's the only dangerous activity that kids do is drive, so it's really, really critical to sort of um, be familiar with what your car seat is and how it works and how you should use it. It is your responsibility, ultimately. Okay, so this style of seat right here, this is a Nuna Pippa Air RX. This is an infant seat. And people are like, well, what do you mean it's an infant seat? It means that this seat is exclusively rear facing. It has a handle. Infant seats always have this bucket style handle. And nine times out of 10, infant seats will include what is called a base. A base is basically a docking station that sits in your car. Now, I'm gonna install this base with the load leg tucked underneath. I don't want 8,000 comments that I didn't put the load leg down. I know I'm not putting it down, but this won't touch the floor. So we would tuck it under anyway. So I'm gonna install that piece, and now that's in my back seat. And as you can see, it's not moving anywhere. And now I'm gonna be able to take my infant, my newborn, any child, and this is what's so great, every car seat has stamped right on the side of it the weight range and the height range that it will allow. So this seat is suitable from four pounds all the way up to 30 pounds, and it will work to 30 inches long. So this will click directly on the docking station. And now when I park my car and I pull out my stroller, I can take this little guy and pop it right onto the stroller. So, why does this matter? It matters because you can skip buying an infant seat completely. People are like, oh my God, are you serious? That is such a huge savings. Why didn't I know that? The reason why you didn't know it is because most people do not do that. And the reason why most people don't do it is because they love having the portability of an infant seat. So if you're really confused, just know that all the other car seats that I'm gonna show you will not pop out of the car with your kids sitting in them and click onto a stroller. Any other type of car seat that you buy, you will physically undo the buckles, you will take your child out and you will put them directly into a stroller or have them walk, whatever they're doing, carrier, but, um, the idea is that the only portable car seats with the handle, the ones that click onto strollers and make life easy because we don't have to wake the baby up, that's gonna be an infant seat. If you like the convenience of leaving your child buckled in here and clicking them onto a stroller, you will need to purchase an infant seat. You're probably like, why do you keep repeating the same information? I'm not an idiot. Good, I'm glad. So let's talk about the next style of seat, since you're so smart. Um, that is gonna be a convertible seat. So I had a grandpa one time just get like really adamant. I love crabby grandpas. 
They're usually the best customers. They're like easy to win over. But he was adamant that he did not need this style of seat. So this style of car seat, so this one right here, this blue one in front of me, this is called a convertible seat. And the grandpa was like, I don't have a convertible. Why do I need a convertible seat? And I was like, dog, chill out. All convertible means is that it converts from facing backward to forward facing. And he was like, oh, so that's kind of neat. That's a good name then. And I was like, yeah, it has nothing to do with your style of vehicle. It just means, hey, I'm gonna face backward. And when I face backward, I recline because realistically a backward facing kid, they need that head and neck support. And this will get significantly taller. So if you're like, oh, okay. I see what you mean now. I could use this from birth all the way through to a larger size. Yes, you could, but you would be physically taking your child out every time. And you wouldn't have that convenience of clicking it in and out of the docking station and moving it onto a stroller or moving it in between vehicles. Because of course, with an infant seat, you can buy more than one base, more than one docking station. So for other cars, it can easily click in. These larger size seats, these convertible seats, 99% of them do not have a second base or a base at all. This is all one unit. There isn't a separatable piece here from this bottom bit. It looks like it could maybe come off, but it doesn't. So why does that matter? If you're a two vehicle household and you've been popping that in infant seat in between bases, now you're gonna need two car seats. You're gonna need one for one car and one for another car. Um, Again, there are exceptions to this rule. And of course I sell both of the seats that have that, but by and large for 99% of what most people are looking at, these convertible seats are all one thing. They face backward. And then for a larger kid, you'll sit the seat more upright, larger, older child to go forward facing. So your rear facing seat in this case, this Nuna Rava goes 50 pounds rear facing. And then for a forward facing car seat, it'll hold a child up to 65 pounds. And don't worry gang, I got us a chart of ages, weights and heights. So we can talk about different ages, weights and heights and how long stuff will realistically last. Um, and that's another part of this conversation that I want to kind of quickly touch on. When we talk about you going into a store and communicating with a clerk, I would hope that from watching these videos, you're very kind to them. And I hope you understand that like bringing negativity and putting that on somebody else is never a good idea. You need to be open-minded and you need to be excited, right? So um, when you go shopping, saying things like, well, pff, this is so stupid. I don't understand why I have to keep rebuying these car seats. Do you say the same thing when you go into the Apple store and are buying your like fifth iPhone? I bet you don't. I bet you're excited when you go and do that. So like for most people, if it's not cost prohibitive, please keep in mind that growing bodies are going to require different stuff at different ages. Just like your children will need new shoes as they get larger and new clothes as they get larger, as their body gets bigger, some of these needs are going to change. Okay. So being frustrated about that is understandable, but then like going into a store and being weird to a store clerk that probably makes nothing and putting your weird stuff on them is definitely not cool. And so I'm proud of you for watching this video to get the language, to be able to articulate to somebody what would make sense for you to look for. So convertible seat faces backward, faces forward. Convertible seat, we can start with a kid as little as five pounds. It'll come with a body pillow in that case. I don't have it in here. But like we said, we could start with this seat from a child as little as five pounds. We could turn them around uh, in California on their second birthday, provided that they met with the uh, guidelines on the side of the seat. And so this seat, which is a Nuna 2021 or 2022, you can uh, turn them forward facing after I believe it's 35 pounds on or 25 pounds on the newer seat. It's a five pound increase on the 2024. Let's see what this says. 
Yeah, so they have to be at least 25 pounds before you would turn them forward facing. With this model, on the new model, I believe it's 30 pounds. So if you've got a 2024 20, Rava, keep that in mind. And again, this is why you have to read the manual. These changes do happen, and it's critical to sort of be aware of what those changes are so you can be in compliance with how your seat is safety tested. Okay, convertible seats. Now, let's say you really are dealing with someone that truly believes they know best and they're only gonna buy one car seat and that's gonna be it forever. Um, you can do that, that's called an all-in-one seat. We'll get to that in a second. But something I wanna point out about uh, convertible car seats is if you have older siblings or if you're familiar with any kind of car seat information, we used to tell people infant seat, convertible seat, booster seat. I, wouldn't, I would not personally uh, tell somebody that. Um, I've been doing this too long and I have seen horrifying things of people putting children, taking them out of this style of seat and putting them into a booster seat too soon. So um, we'll get into what a booster seat is in a minute and we'll still get into what an all-in-one is. But I wanna talk about a seat that's forgotten or poorly understood quite a bit. This bad boy right here is what's referred to as a combination seat. So I'm a big fan of combination seats. And the reason why is that most people, when they're buying a convertible seat, they don't know what they're looking for. So they're like, well, I got one that rear faced and forward faced and it came in a pretty color and my wife loved it, but you know, they've outgrown it and they're only four and a half. And it's like, that is, even though the seat will theoretically hold 65 pounds and a four and a half year old does not weigh 65 pounds, where a kid has outgrown the seat might be in the torso. So like this torso length is about 16.75 inches, about 17 inches. So that's from butt to the top of shoulder. The best thing for kids to do is to sit backward. The next best thing, if they are not sitting backward, is to have them in this race car style harness, this five point harness, right? We know that. So both of these seats are gonna give us a five point harness. What a combination seat does is a combination seat only faces forward but it's a combination of a forward facing car seat and a booster seat. So it's gonna do both things. And you're like, why do I care? You care because the kid is still pretty small and they've topped out of the harness height here. Like for me, I have a super long body and short legs. I could outgrow the body component of this and still be emotionally, developmentally, and physically too little to go into a booster seat. If that's the case, a combination seat gives you more seated torso height with this style of five point harness. Now what's really cool is that once they outgrow this component with combination seats, you tuck away the five point harness or you completely remove it. And then this seat will work just with the seat belt over the body and it becomes what's referred to as a high back booster seat. So you're probably like, what? What that means is these pieces go away and this will just look more like a traditional booster seat. If you're like, I don't know what a booster seat is. I'm gonna show you right now. Don't worry, we're still gonna circle back to an all-in-one car seat. This is our booster seat, okay? So this guy here in the end, this combination seat, this is a Kiko MyFit. I really like this little uh, combination seat. It's very cost-effective, but it's not Nuna. Nuna's booster seat, which is this ace right here. This normally also has cup holders. Um, what this guy has that this one doesn't is the ability to widen as we raise the headrest up. Why does that matter? If we're talking about booster seats, which is the step after combination, kids that I think are realistically fitting into booster seats or when I would feel comfortable to start using booster seat would not even be until age six, minimum, minimum minimum. <laughs> Some people are like, I want to put my four-year-old in a booster. Ah! Oh my God. I would never recommend that um, unless there's literally no other choice. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would hold off on getting a booster seat for as long as possible. And I would keep them in like this style seat over here, which is a five point harness, as long as they can still fit in it and the seat tolerates it. So again, on the side of the seat, this is marked with the weight and the height restrictions. So the weight limit on it in the harness mode is 65 pounds. The uh, height limit on it, it's actually pretty clear on this guy. Your height limit is going to be 54 inches uh, or less um, for the harness height. And then in booster mode, it goes up to 57 inches. This booster seat, 
goes from 40 to 110 pounds as a high back and up between 38 and 60 inches. I wonder if it has a backless difference. And then I think for backless, we go to 120 and then also 38 to 60 inches. So as a backless booster, this will hold 10 more pounds. And you're like, what the hell are you talking about backless? What I mean is you can take this backrest off and this booster seat goes from being what's referred to as a high back booster down to just a butt only booster. And if you're like, I, I still don't get this. What the hell does booster mean? Let's talk about the actual language, right? So convertible seat by convertible seat, put that little Rava on the ground. When we put, I'm gonna put this backrest back on this booster seat. So when we're using this style of seat in our car, actually put the headrest down too. We're gonna use this seat belt as, um, well this seat's, this seat's special in that there's, um, the seat has lower anchors, which I'm pulling out just to help the seat stay stable. You would not even need to use these at all. They do not affect the safety of the seat when your child is in it, but it is a convenience feature definitely to have something like that. So um, the point being how your child stays in here, because there's no harness, right? We're gonna use the seat belt that's in your car already and we're gonna feed it wherever you see this red. And so there's red here. And now we'd buckle Ooh, the seatbelt. It's a tight squeeze. But as you can see, this is what's using, instead of a five point harness, where the harness is coming from one, two, three, four, five spots on the body to hold us in. Here we're doing one, two, three points. So five point harness is always better than a three point harness. So that's why we would say, leave them in a five point harness as long as they fit in the seat. And that is why combination seats are valuable, especially if they have. Sorry, I was talking so much that my battery actually died. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we changed the battery. So now we're back. But yes, as we we're pointing out, um, Five point harness is always better than a three point harness if we can swing it. So that is where the value of these combination seat lies. It's not so much that it's the high back booster, but it's that you get that additional seated torso height for that five point harness. Because let's talk about the weights and the heights of kids. I wanna bring up this um, convertible seat while we have this conversation. So the car seats will give us information on the side but let's talk about the actual size of your children. So as I pointed out for the infant seat, usually people stop using infant seat at around age one and they switch over to convertible seat. And if I didn't necessarily touch on it on this video, it's because the infant seat is so heavy with the weight of the baby in it that it becomes uh, completely antithetical to what you were after when you bought it, which was that portability, that ability to move the baby around so easily. Well, now your kid's heavy and like lifting that seat with your heavy kid is disgusting. So even though they might technically still be under the weight and the height allowance of the seat, we see people sort of abandon using infant, infant seats around age one and moving into the convertible style seat. So remember, we can't just skip to this guy because this goes forward facing. We need something that will rear face. So what's great about this seat is that we can have the child backward facing till they're 50 pounds. Okay, let's talk about how big a 50 pound kid actually is. I stole this height chart from the Cincinnati Pediatric Hospital and they gave a weight and height variance chart with the different uh, children. So. Again, these are, there's like uh, variation on all of this, but these are averages. That's the word I'm looking for. So for a one-year-old, your average weight is gonna be around 21 pounds. Your average height is between 28 and 30 inches. For a two-year-old, you're looking at between 24 and 34 pounds and between 32 and 37 inches. A three-year-old is likely gonna be between 26 and 38 pounds. So that's a big spectrum and 40 inches tall. So we've slowed down on the growth in terms of height. Our four-year-olds are gonna range from 30 
to 44 pounds and they'll probably top off at around 43 inches. So um, we have the most height growth between zero and two and then three and four we slow down pretty heavily. So when we're talking about keeping a kid rear facing till they're 50 pounds, for most children that would be till the age of five. Now I love this car seat. There will be five-year-olds that fit in here um, no problem, but I would even argue my nephew forward facing in this seat at five was like busting out of the seat. And it's nothing to do with the way that this seat is incorrectly built. The seat is sized like other seats. He was just physically a large, broad kid. So we moved him into a combination seat, one that's even broader than this one, um, so that he could still be in that five point harness and we didn't throw him into a booster seat too soon. So, uh, an eight-year-old, for instance, is between 46 and 78 pounds and between 47 and 54 inches. Why does that matter? Both of these seats, this uh, combination seat from Kiko and this booster seat from uh, Nuna, would work for kids as big as eight, possibly even up to age 10. So when, you know, you say things like, well, I've got a big kid and they don't need to be in a car seat and that's stupid. If you really think about their weight and their height and the fact that cars are manufactured to protect occupants that are five feet, 10 inches tall and 200 pounds, that's who crash test dummies are. That's who they test with the car seats. Yeah, it's probably a really good idea to have some type of seat for your kid that prevents them from getting hurt in a vehicle that's not designed for them whatsoever. Um, and keep in mind, the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration only started using anatomically female crash test dummies in 2011. So these are not people that are like really on the cutting edge. You know, they're gonna do stuff, but they're gonna do it cost effectively, which means like only adult men matter. Women and children, not as big of a deal. So. That's why we need to advocate for ourselves and understand what, uh, how to arm ourselves with like the best possible choices. So we talked about seat orientation, facing backward or forward. We talked about infant seats. We talked about convertible seats. We talked about combination seats and we talked about booster seats. And you're like, what could possibly be left? The all-in-one. So don't get too excited because even the best all-in-one has limitations. So I get this question a lot from people that don't necessarily do a very good job of listening and that's okay. Listening is hard, but I'll have people come back around like the kid's first birthday to buy a convertible seat and they see a really beautiful all-in-one and they say, well, why didn't you sell me that last year? Why'd you sell me that infant seat? I could have skipped that. I tell every single person that comes through here this information, whether or not they hear it is up to them. Um, but as I said, most people want that portability of clicking the infant seat on and off the stroller, even though this seat right here, this is the exec from Nuna. This is a $750 all-in-one car seat. This is not portable. You cannot take this off a base and click it onto a stroller. So again, if that matters to you as a new parent, you will have to start with an infant seat, okay? This seat, which is an all-in-one seat, and it does a really nice job. It's gonna face backward. Has an anti-rebound plate, really cool. So this one goes backward to 50 pounds, forward facing with a five point harness to 65 pounds. And then, like our combination seat from Kiko, we would tuck away this component, and this guy has the hookups for the seatbelt to go over your child's body, all worked into one car seat. So if you're like, hey, I only wanna buy one, I really don't wanna buy more, you can certainly buy an all-in-one. Now, what's the drawback of an all-in-one? There's no portability for the first year. I don't care about that because like, that's a very easy thing to understand. Um, and if you don't get that, you probably struggle with other things uh, just in general with comprehension. Um, but what I will say is where I think all-in-ones are poor 
is I don't think they're the best booster seats. And again, this is an awesome car seat. I sell these all day. I love this seat. But where I would struggle with this seat is what we were talking about before, which is with larger children. We bought this seat for a kid that was one on their first birthday and they were sitting backward and then we went backward till three and then forward facing till five. Now we got a five-year-old and we're getting toward the end of the harness height here for our forward facing. And we can turn this into a booster. Again, I would still say do a combination seat um, because actually that combination seat that I took down has an inch and a half more seated torso harness height than this seat does. So again, that's where a combination seat is useful. But if you do have an all-in-one, you would remove this harness piece, you would tuck it into the uh, spots on the inside of the seat and you would go ahead and start using this as a booster. <sighs> booster seats uh, is a thing that are really uh, confusing to consumers. And usually by this point, people are so sick of buying car seats that they generally cheap out on the booster, which is the dumbest thing you can possibly do. And let me explain why. When you buy something for an infant, an infant is never gonna say, I don't like this. This doesn't feel comfortable. My friend has a Paw Patrol one. I want the one that looks like Susie's. I want the one that looks like so-and-so's. Older children, children that are in booster seats, they are big. They have opinions. They might need or want certain things out of their seat that their baby car seat or their littler kid car seat doesn't accomplish as well. So if we look at, this is a completely different brand. So if we look at this booster seat right here, this is the Peg Perego uh, Flex 120. Love this booster. But the reason why I really like this booster, and actually I'm gonna take, uh, don't fall. I'm gonna take this one down and I'm gonna bring that combination seat back up because that is a better uh, example of what I wanna show. So like this booster seat and this guy is a booster seat would both have these big handles on it. This seat has no handles. This seat also sits very flat to the ground and the child's accessibility to a buckle in this seat is much better than in the other seats that we are looking at. And that's not to say there is anything wrong with an Ace or with um, a Kiko MyFit, but you may have a car that is like a Tesla Model Y, horrible buckle stock situation. There may only be certain seats that you have to get that are narrow enough at the bottom to be able to actually get to the buckle safely and correctly. Um, this also has cup holders, this is reclinable. This grows with the kid gets wider, gets taller from the bottom too. So like um, this has an aluminum body. So there's just like a lot of things about booster seats for older children where I would bring in my kid to actually make them sit in it. And then I would make sure that the seat was actually uh, able to fit in my car functionally and usefully based on where I wanted to use it. So a fit check for me is way more important on a booster seat than most of the other style of seats. But the problem is by the time people are ready to make this purchase, they're usually like really crabby and they're mad that they have to buy another car seat. Again, I don't know why people get so upset about car seat purchases and get mad that it's like expensive. Um, again, compared to most stuff that people are buying, it's really not that expensive and it has to do with their children's safety. So I'm not sure why like lamenting about that to a sales associate is necessarily appropriate. But again, your call completely. Um, I would assume that if you're watching these videos, you're probably relatively conscientious. You care a lot about learning. And so that's why I say like, be a conscientious shopper. If you're gonna go to a store and make somebody bring something out to your car and fit it in your car and they're doing that for you, you better buy it from that store. You better not go online and try and find it cheaper after somebody's helped you. That's like completely the wrong attitude. Um, especially for stores that like provide that kind of service in order for them to be able to do that you have to shop like locally and keep your business with the people that are actually helping you so that's another thing that i think is really important to this conversation especially about car seats and car seat fitting um it's completely unbelievable to me that anybody would have a sales staff bring out a car seat to their car and then they would not end up buying something from that location uh, unless there's extreme extenuating circumstances okay so we've talked about the different styles of car seats. We have infant seat, convertible seat, combination seat, 
booster seat, and all-in-one. We talked about all of those. We talked about the different heights and weights of children. So now you have some idea of how big they're gonna be at different heights and weights. Um, keep in mind, if they outgrow the height of the car seat before the weight, you have to move up to the next thing. It's not a both thing, it's an either or thing, okay? Um, oh, one more thing. So I think part of the reason that there is frustration is that infant seats are expensive compared to other styles of car seats. Infant seats are used for the shortest duration of time and they are the most expensive because we want them to be portable, we want them to click into strollers, we want them to click into docking stations. We're asking the infant seat to do a lot with the mechanics and that is what costs so much on them compared to other styles of seats. So like you'll get people that say, I wanna buy a $550 infant car seat. Okay, you can do that. Remember, that is the shortest duration of use of all of the car seats that you're gonna buy. So if buying a $550 infant seat means that you buy a really poor convertible seat then for your next seat that you're actually using for four or five years, I would say that is a very foolish decision. I would always keep in mind um, the duration of how long I'm using something and weigh that over its cost and my budget, right? If 550 is not cost prohibitive for you, I am not shaming people that want $550 infant seats. All I'm saying is that like, use your head and look at your budget and look at your lifestyle and see what matters to you and make an informed decision based on those things. But just keep in mind that those infant seats, they grow out of them very rapidly. Okay, um, I think we talked about why booster seats are inappropriate for children that are very little. But again, I am going to reiterate um, sort of the age range. So infant seats are probably through to age one. Convertible seats are gonna go from uh, age one through to age five or six. Combination seats would go age six to eight. Booster seats are good probably through ages six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So, um, and all-in-ones should do theoretically the same thing, but your all-in-one you're going to encounter eventually kids getting physically too large for it, even though they might be under the weight and height restriction of the seat. Okay. Um, we talked about why turning kids around prior to age two is foolish. We talked about best practice, leaving them rear facing as long as humanly possible because we don't want that internal decapitation. We don't want their head uh, flopping forward in an accident and then decapitating from the inside be horrible. So again, that's what that rear facing mode is going to provide. And um, oh, one other thing. This happens a lot. I get people that come in and they're like, oh, the seats you sold me don't work for three kids across on one bench. No, most seats won't. Most seats are gonna be too wide. If you're looking for a narrow seat where you can fit three across, you're gonna need to buy a seat with a mindset of only being 17 inches wide for that car seat. This is a hill I'm pretty much willing to die on. I'm sure people are gonna comment beneath that they can fit larger in their Tahoe. Great, um, but the rule of thumb that we would tell people in general is to use a 17 inch guideline for three across. Um, don't you just have any car seats that are like super cheap so that like I can just get around whatever rule is stupid? No, dude, I don't have any seats like that. I don't have any seats so that like you can appease the system. What I have are seats that will protect kids' lives and we have information that'll make stuff easier and safer and better for children. And so again, approaching it with the right mindset and being uh, open and willing to learn and understand what's going on with it so that you can make the best choice for your lifestyle and budget is the best thing that you can do and just stay cool about it. Um, the more you research and learn about these things, the less frustrating it becomes. It's only frustrating when we don't understand what we're doing. Once we start to understand what we're doing, it's a lot more fun. Now, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Please feel free to hit like. Please feel free to subscribe. If it makes sense to share this information with somebody, go ahead and share it. Sharing is caring. Um, we appreciate every viewer, every view. If you stayed all the way through, thank you. You are a rock star. And now you should hopefully know a little bit more about car seats, car seat laws, safety, just in general. But any of your questions, I got you. Just leave them below. And feel free to check out any of my other 150 videos about all kinds of baby stuff. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope your weekend is good.